Thurman says, you got your car here? I said, yeah. You know what? I said, let's go. Jumped in his plane, jetted off. That was Thurman Munson. That was, that's why he had that job. Okay, it's Monday at 11 o'clock. You know what that means. The Chaz Palmentary Show, a new podcast every Monday at 11 o'clock. For those of you who never saw my one-man show, go to chazpalmentary.net. This is the show that started it all before the movie, before the musical. Uh, I was voted best show of the year in Las Vegas, and uh, it was a hit on Broadway. It's, it's just a great show. Come and see it, chazpalmentary.net. Uh, John, where are my dates there? I'm going to be in uh, Melville, uh, New Jersey, right? September 16th, Melville, New Jersey, the Lavoie Theater. Right. September 17th, we're in Montclair, New Jersey, the Wellmont Theater. Wellmont Theater, great place. September 22nd, we're in Akron, Ohio at the E.J. Thomas Hall. Right. And September 23rd, we're in Cincinnati, Ohio at the Taft Theater. That's just in September, but if you want to check out my dates for the rest of the year and next year, go to chazpalmentary.net. Go to my restaurants. Uh, I got two of the top Italian restaurants in the country. I never say the best because there's a lot of great restaurants out there. But am I in the top five? Absolutely. Okay, absolutely. 30 West 46th Street, 264 Main Street in White Plains. Uh, 30 West 46th Street is right off Fifth Avenue. Okay, so I have a guest here. We've been friends a very long time. Uh, This man, like... George Steinbrenner was the New York Yankees. You know, the Steinbrenner family, obviously, still own the Yankees. Uh, But this guy here, we're going to talk about his story. He's got a book coming out. Uh, That's out already, right? That's been out, yeah. That's out, Yankee Miracles, Life with the Boss and the Bronx Bombers. Here he is, Ray Narone. Uh, Ray, now you got to tell us, Ray. Is there some people out there who don't know you? Uh, Tell us... You grew up in the South Bronx, right? Right. And you come from a Cuban family? Cuban and Puerto Rican. Cuban and Puerto Rican. Cuban and Puerto Rican. Wow, that must have been. What a mixture. What a mixture that is. There had to be Mm. some major fights there. Better believe it. Right, Cuban. Did the Cubans like Puerto Ricans or did they like each other or was just... Well, my my mother liked my father for a little while and then things (laughs) broke down and, you know, I'm here. And, And you're here. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, here's this kid... Growing up in the South Bronx, now you've been with the New York Yankees for 50 years? 50 years, and back in June, June 29th. 50 years, back in June. But for those of you who don't know, tell us how you met George Steinbrenner, please. Uh, June 29th, 1973, I'm outside Yankee Stadium. Uh, we're all, we were all going to be going to the Yankee game that night because that's what we did. But you know what? That day we were doing graffiti outside Yankee Stadium. Graffiti. And, and as we were, as we were doing our masterpieces, all of a sudden a car rolls up onto the sidewalk. Two guys jump out of the car. I'm the one that's caught. I'm put in a holding cell at the old Yankee Stadium, getting ready to be sent to the 44th precinct. Wow. The one security guard says to the other guy. That's where he belongs. There's nothing that you can do for this guy. And when he said that, the other guy said, give me the kid. Give me the kid. So they took me out of the holding cell. They took me over to the Yankee Stadium locker room. I'm walking into Oz, all the incredible white uniforms, wondering what the hell is going on. And all of a sudden, the guy says, what's the smallest uniform you got? Pete Sheehy, the incredible clubhouse man from the days of Babe Ruth, says, we have Jerry Kenny's old uniform. It's an old number two. He said, pull off the number two and give it to the kid so he could wear it. He's going to be our bat boy tonight. Who's talking? And that man was George Steinbrenner, the owner of the New York Yankees. He made you the bat boy? He made me the bat boy that night. Were you a Yankee fan at that time? I I loved the Yankees. I always loved the Yankees because of the movie, The Pride of the Yankees. So okay. why did he make you a bat boy, just like that? Because he, it, he took that as a challenge from the cop, the other guy that said, the security guard that said to him, there is nothing that you can do for this kid. And he took that as a direct challenge. Wow. And because of that, for years, he helped out. He pulled out kids from the street and made them bat boys. One time, Chaz, there was a kid outside Yankee Stadium, a black kid, 
And uh, Steinbrenner says to him, it was 8 o'clock in the morning. George always got to the ballpark early. He says to the kid, why, you, why aren't you in school? The kid says, it's a Jewish holiday. Steinbrenner says, but you're not Jewish, as you know, with his dry humor. Mm. And next thing you know, he says, come with me. He took him down to the Yankee uh, visitor's locker room and made him the bat boy. The kid was there for several years. George took a liking to the kid. One day, George says to me, I haven't seen Sam around lately. What's happened to him? I had to tell him Sam joined the circus. True story. Sam joined the circus. Steinbrenner started laughing hysterical. I said, boss, what's really so funny about that? He says, didn't he realize that with the Yankees, he was already in the circus? Oh, wow. Wow, well, that's right. This was 76, 77. No, no, Ray, for the people out there, the Yankee fans or whatever, you were there with the Bronx Zoo and all that, right? What was it like back then? It was a glorious time, as they would say in Goodfellas, okay? I mean, Thurman Munson, Reggie Jackson, Billy Martin, it, you know, Sparky Lyle, Greg Nettles. It was, a wild, it was the Wild West inside the locker room, and you wow. didn't know what you was going to get. Lou Pinella was the most hilarious guy. Catfish Hunter was incredibly funny, and Lou... Uh, Lou could, I'll never forget, it was a Friday night, and so Lou went out with the guys right. in the city. The next day, Lou is late showing up at the ballpark. It's a day game. And so Catfish says, where's Lou? Next thing you know, Lou's walking in. He's got a big black eye. And they say, and Catfish said, what happened? Don't worry about what happened. Just worry about what I, what I did to the other guy. That's what he said. That's what he said. Wow. Out of all the Bronx Zoo time, was Reggie there? Reggie was there, too. Huh? Reggie was there. Reg, you know. Now, who was, you would say, at that time in the Bronx Zoo time, who was the most liked Yankee by everybody, would you think? Thurman Munson. He was the most respected guy. Really? By far. It wasn't even close. Mm. You know, and you better not call him captain, because he didn't like that. He didn't like if you call him captain? No, not but at all. But he was the captain. He was the captain because he had to accept that. George Steinbrenner says, I need you to lead this team. This team is going to win, and you have to be our captain. I don't want to be a captain. I don't need to be a captain. I don't want things to change. Thurman, you're our captain. And he says, okay. And so then what happened was they got him a uniform with a C on it. And when he wa Thurman walked in, he saw the C on the shirt. He said, get, the hell, get that the hell out of here. I'm not wearing that. He did. And he wouldn't wear it. Like Keith Hernandez used to wear the C, the C for captain yeah. when, on his mat. Thurman would not have it. One time Cliff Johnson says, hey, Thurman, what's happening? He goes, hey, what's happening, captain? And Thurman goes, what, what's with this captain shit? Can I curse on you? Yeah. He says, what's with this captain shit? And he said, you're the captain. Hey, Cliff, don't call me captain. All right, captain. Cliff, if you call me captain again, I'm going to beat the fuck out of you. And he says, sure, captain. And at that moment, Thurman picked him up by the crotch. And Cliff was a big guy. And Cliff was a very big guy. Very big guy. But Thurman was a very strong guy. Whoa. And he grabbed him by the crotch and by the neck, lifted him up. And instead of throwing him against the wall, he decided to throw him into the couch. And he said to him, only reason I didn't throw you against the walls because we need you today. Did all the captains on the Yankees have the C? No. After Thurman, no one was going to do that. No one was going to do you that. Know, number one, we, sh we, shouldn't have, we should not have had another captain after Thurman, okay? Thurman said, I shouldn't be the captain because Lou Gehrig was told that there would never be another captain. And George Steinbrenner said, if Joe McCarthy would have known Thurman Munson, he would have made him a captain too. Wow. Yeah, they. I mean, I remember when, obviously, not to get everybody down, but I remember when the plane crashed. I remember, I remember Reggie crying in their outfield. You know. What people don't understand, Chaz, is that Thurman and Reggie became friends. They became. They that, be the per, the perception is that they were never friends. Every time that someone says, "Reggie, does it upset you?" that you were never friends with Thurman Munson, and he, uh, and he will always say, see, you don't know what you're talking about. He did that on Howard Stern recently where he said, number one, I was his friend. You know why I was his friend? Because a guy that's still with the Yankees to this day, Ray Negron, put us together. You know how I put them together, Chas? Hmm. We were in Detroit. The game had ended. 
Reggie was always like the last guy to leave the clubhouse. And then I would go and get a cab and we would go wherever we were going to go. So this one time after the game was over, everybody's basically gone. I walk into the trainer's room. Thurman, they were working on Thurman's knees because he had trouble with one of his knees. And I said, Thurman, you still here, huh? He says, what are you doing here? He says, I'm going to the, some bar with Reggie, and he wants you to go with us. Reggie wants me to go? Yeah, he would like for you to go. All right, all right, I'll go. Mm. So then I went back, you know, that was, that was bullshit, you understand? Oh. So then I went back to Reggie, and I said, hey, Reggie, Thurman wants to know if you want to go to this bar with us. I thought you was going with me. Yeah, but I'm going to go with Thurman. You want to go? Well, go get a cab. We'll all go all together. And so I went, got the cab. They come walking Whoa. out. They walked in. We went to Gordy House Sports Bar. Gordy House, yeah. And in there, the two of them chatted, and they were this. First, the first thing out of Thurman's mouth was, you know, I really don't like you, but I got to tolerate you. You know, and he got it out. He got everything he wanted out of his system. But, Reggie, I was proud of him because he took it because he needed to take it. Yeah. And he did. And then after that, Derm, uh, Reggie goes, I'm glad after they had their talk and they're all happy. Reggie says to Thurman, I'm glad that you wanted to go out with me tonight. And Thurman goes, wait a minute. Is that what Ray told you? And I said, oh, no. Yeah. You know, he caught me, but. So they caught you. But, but it was it okay. Was good. It was wow. great. So, Re so Reggie was really broken up when Raymond, when he died. Thurman. Reggie used to do a lot of favors for Thurman. He really did. He wanted to, he, because he, there was that guilt thing about the whole straw that stirs yeah, and drink thing yeah. and all that stuff. And, and for the last two years, he really went out of his way to try to help Thurman in every way that he could. Wow. You know, he did little favors for him. Would you say that and again, we don't like to talk out of school. Was Reggie a great teammate? Uh, uh, let, let me put it to you this way. He tried to be the best teammate that he could be. Right. Even though he was Mr. October, the whole Hollywood thing. Right. He was doing all the TV shows, Love Boat, all the, you know, that kind of stuff. Really? Wow. But he was Mr. October, but he really tried. And let me say this. The incredible respect that he had for Thurman Munson right. was through the roof. Now, was Reggie, I, I, I guess I could say that, was, say he, was he well liked on the team? He, I, I can't say that because Thur, uh, Nettles wasn't a big fan. Right. Sparky wasn't a big fan. He, you know, with certain but guys. But they respected him as a baseball as a, player. Forget about it. No, when it came to baseball and winning, yeah. those guys were professionals. I mean, Reggie. Say, be as it may, whatever you feel about him. He's a big league. I showed hey, up, hey. Mr. October. You don't get that name for nothing. Chaz, in my 50 years, there has never been mm. a more professional team than the 1977-78 Yankees. Really? As far In my 50 years. I'm not talking about the Mantle Maris era. I'm talking about from, right. 70, from 73 on. Nettles and Munson and, you know, Fred Stanley and... I mean, those guys, Lou Pinella, I mean, those were professional baseball players. Right, right. And they were professional. Hey, who was Lou Pinella? My uncle gets shot seven times. My uncle ran a bar in Chicago. Right. He got shot seven times, okay, and survived. George Steinbrenner comes over to me because he found out about it. And he says, the team is, uh, the next road trip, the team is going Kansas City, Chicago. Go with the team so you can go see your uncle. So I go with the team. We get to Chicago. I'm sitting in the lobby. I'm scared shitless because it, it, I, I didn't know how to, what to expect in seeing my uncle like this. Lou Pinella comes downstairs and he says, aren't you going to go see your uncle? I said, Lou, I'm scared. He says, asshole, let's go. And he takes me, jumps in the cab, goes to the hospital oh. with me to see my uncle. That was Lou Pinella. Lou Pinella. Now, would you say that Munson was a love teammate by everybody? Oh, absolutely. Everybody loved him. Everybody loved Thurman. I, I, I don't know. Hey, Thurman wasn't a puss or anything like that. Thurman was a man's man. You understand, Chance? Mm. He was a man, okay? He was a, if there was a situation, he's going to be the first one to bitch slap somebody. Okay? Really? He was a that, tough guy. He was a tough guy. Now, I think he bought the plane so he could see his family more. Was that right? He wanted to be able to tuck his son in. 
He wanted, hey, we're in Boston. Right. Chaz, we're in Boston. Uh, I had driven up with one of the other bad boys that day. And so the team was going to go, the next day was a day off, and then they were going to fly to whatever town it was. Thurman says, you got your car here? I said, yeah. You know what? It, you could, from Boston, if you drive me to Teterboro, I can, in essence, get the plane, have the plane ready, get to Canton, and be able to tuck in, tuck in Michael and the, and the girls. I said, let's go. And we drove like madmen all to get to Teterboro. When we get to Teterboro, he ran with his attache case, jumped in his plane, and jetted off. That was Dermot Munson. That was, wow. That's why he had that jet. Yeah, that jet. How do you remember? Uh, how did the day happen that you found out he died? Do you remember that day? Chaz, um, I was at a friend's house. Right. And we were in the yard. This guy was one of my, was a wealthy guy and so he had a batting cage in his yard and we were in the batting cage hitting and all of a sudden his mother comes running out and she says Ray Ray come inside a minute come inside and so she takes me and Jerry Gerard was on TV channel 11 yeah I remember yeah. and he says yeah the Yankees captain Thurman Munson has perished in an airplane crash and that was like was like tore, I was broken, wow. like everybody else, like everybody else. And then you went back to the stadium, and everybody was the next day. What was it like? The the team must have been dev obviously. I could see the way emotionally you got. Chaz, the team was devastated. The next day, see that was an he died on an off day. August second was an off day. Then that fr that was a Thursday. That Friday, I go in. I got there early. I went to the bat bag and I took out his last bat. I was selfishly thinking I want Thurman's last bat. Yeah. And I hid it in my locker. You still have it? So what happened was Billy Martin was so broken and I Billy was my father. Yeah. He was my father. And he was so broken and crying and crying Billy and Martin crying. Was crying just crying and punching the desk and crying. And I said, and I couldn't stand it. And so I went, I wanted to make him feel, you know, and so I went into my, the locker and I got the bat. And I said, look, Thurman, I want you to have this, please. Oh, that was nice of you. You know, and uh, we, we literally hugged in his closet. We went to his closet because all of a sudden the writers started to come in. So then he, he grabbed my arm and we went into his closet. Wow. And we just hugged and he cried and I cried and just. The whole team cried, I guess. And so then what happened was they, they took out all the writers and um, Steinbrenner came in. And Steinbrenner had to explain what happened. And as he started talking about Thurman, he started crying hysterically. You never saw the boys cry? Never. That was the first time. And so when he started crying like that, Bobby Mercer stood up and held the boss, and then he, he told everybody what happened, how he died. Wow. And how his last words were to tell the, the two guys that were with him, get out, the plane's gonna blow up, get away, get away. He perished right So there. he perished on the ground. He perished on the ground. Wow. He told the other, did the other guys die too? The other guys did not die, but one, one of the guy has burns all over because they were trying to get him out, but the, the steering column was into his chest. And they couldn't get him out. And, they, and because of the weight, they couldn't get him out, and the flames were coming and coming, and to this day, the guy has smart brain, uh, burn marks all over. Wow. I remember how tragic. How long do you think it took for the Yankees to get over that and when they were playing? We didn't get over it. Really? We didn't get over That whole year? The rest of that year, you know, like... How'd they do that year? I don't remember. No, uh, we were like in third place. Mm. We were like in third place, but we, we were like walking zombies. Really? The, the guys that loved Thurman, you know, they were like walking zombies. They couldn't just go play baseball again. They, they, they did the best they could, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. thank God that we had Bobby Mercer there because he, 
he had to pick up for Thurman from the standpoint of our he be he was our leader in in his own way. Bobby Mercer was always our leader. Okay, before yeah. he got traded, he was our wow. he was our unofficial captain. You know what I'm saying? He was he was the guy. He you know what he he wanted that role. He was a love teammate too. He was right? totally totally loved. Bobby Mercer. I mean, yeah. I always used to call him a very fine wine because he was great. Uh, he was uh, one of the. Great clutch hitters of yes. all time. People yes. don't realize that. What a clutch hit he was. What a game. Yeah. When we got back from the funeral. That's right. We got back from the what funeral. He, home, he won the game. I think. He drove in all five runs. He drove in all five and runs. And Billy tried to sit because he hadn't slept. He literally. He, and Billy tried to sit him? He, Billy said, I want you to rest. You know, you, you, you're too tired. I see. And he said, Billy, no, I got to play. Wow. And so he hits the, he hits the three run homer, right? Right. And then in the last inning, with second and third, they bring in the left-hander, Tippy Martinez. Right. And so because it's the left-hander, he looked at Billy, and he says, "You want to you want to pinch it for me?" And he says, "Just do what you got to do. Win it for us." And he, wow. He got that big hit. Yeah. <laughs> oh. You want to stop for a second? No. Let's go. No. Oh. Let's go. Wow. And Billy said that, do what you got to do, win it for us? Wow. And you know what's incredible? I really felt bad for Reggie. You you felt bad for Reggie? I really did. Yeah. Because he was going through the pain. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's very difficult to lose someone who's not even sick. You just wake up one morning and somebody tells you they're gone. It's like you cannot... Your mind can't comprehend that, especially someone as big as Thurman, you know, who's bigger than life. And I remember you put me on the phone with his wife recently, and and she was wonderful and so nice. And they still celebrate. That's what's great. The Yankees still celebrate his legacy. 44 years, and people haven't forgotten. 44 years. His children are obviously all grown now, and... um, she comes back old time as day sometimes, right? She, she was just here this week, as a matter of fact. Right. Uh, dealing with his uh, charity that deals with uh, mentally challenged kids. Right. Because you know, that was right. You, see, Thurman Munson was a guy that <laughs> we would dri- be driving, and, we, and I'm thinking we're going to go to a, go pick up a sandwich. And right. next thing you know, we're, he's was stopping at some hospital to go see some kids. Right. And if I, you know, I remember one time right. we're walking in, and so I ran into the candy store to get one of them Instamatic cameras. Right. You know what I'm saying? So as I'm getting out of the car, he goes like that. He slapped my hand so that the camera said, no pictures. Who said that? Thurman. Thurman. You know what I'm saying? It was very hard to get him, pictures of him doing anything nice. So he was kind of really to himself. Very, in that regard. He was so good to the kids. And what would you say out of all the Yankees back then, who was the biggest guy who, who liked to go out the most? As far as sell, uh, what? Partying, hey. partying. Uh. Um, I mean, I have to ask you, this is a question I always wanted to ask somebody. How and what was the relation between Billy Martin and the boss? How could you hire and fire the guy five times? I'm asked that question a lot, and let me just put it to you this way. George Steinbrenner had such a love for Billy Martin. He did. He had such a love for Billy. He loved, he adored Billy Martin. And every time he fired him, it was really alcohol-related. And remember, alcoholism is a disease. So Billy was an alcoholic? For, as far as I'm concerned, he was. It was never proclaimed, but I was with him enough to know that he was an alcoholic. Did he drink during games? No. Was he drunk during games? No. So he would wait till the game was over? Right. Right. But he had an issue. And George Steinbrenner, not it, George not really understanding the disease of alcoholism, always felt that every time he brought him back, Billy was cured. You understand? And then fall back and off the And then he would again. fall, and, and George would have to do what he had to do. He had to be tough. He had to be big brother. And he was a big brother to well, him. I mean, people don't realize this. And then you know, I, I, me, a diehard Yankee fan, Billy was a great manager. Wonderful. Like, really smart. A great manager. 
You know, just, uh, again, the alcoholism. You know how great he was? Lou Pinella and some of the guys, like if Lou wasn't playing that day because it was a right-hander uh, pitching, so what would happen was he would come in and then he would go, hey, guys, get ready. Get ready to watch this. You know, and he would just stare at Billy. He would just stare at Billy with an amazement at his tricks, at his antics, as far as he was always two or three innings ahead, always thinking right. of what he called it. I mean, he was incredible. Uh, I'll never forget that one time he pulls uh, with the runner on third, he pulled a squeeze in a situation where you would not have expected to squeeze, and he did, and we scored a big run, and then uh, Tony La Russa is just staring at, at the uh, dugout. He's staring at Billy. And so, when, uh, you know, I remember them forget. Billy looks at him and La Russa goes. Like, yeah. You know what I'm La saying? La was a great manager. And he was a great manager, but he learned, and he'll tell you to this day, he learned so much from Billy. It's just by watching Billy. Really? Yeah. Billy was, hey, and let me put it to wow. you like this. Billy was a man's man, okay? Billy, let me tell you about Billy Martin. Go ahead. I didn't know him well at all, but I know friends who knew him, and they said, Billy Martin was as tough as anybody. He will knock you on your ass. Hey, the only guy, the only person that I ever met that could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Billy was when I, the, th uh, the first time that I had dinner with Mr. Sinatra. Yeah. And to see Mr. Sinatra, like, tell Billy, hey, fuck you. And I never saw, heard anybody say that to Billy. Really? And Billy accepted it. Well, it's Frank Sinatra. You know, it's not that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Wow. Okay? That's right. Yeah. That's yeah, right. Yeah, no, Billy was a great manager, man. Hey, and, and let me say this. Billy Martin was a great man. He was, yeah. And like Mr. Sinatra, someone that cared about the blacks. Yeah. Okay? I, 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 he did. I despise whenever anybody says that somebody once said that uh, Billy was a racist. No, he wasn't. And I wanted to yeah. rip the guy's face off because yeah. Billy Martin was one of the... Hey, one time somebody was... when I Early on, somebody yeah. was messing with me. Right. He was a racist, this guy. He once dragged me off the field because he knew George Steinbrenner wasn't in town. He took me to the visitor's locker room, and in there they had all the shoes lined up, and the guy says to me, shine the shoes because your people are good at that. Okay? And Billy, wow. Billy found out about that. Yeah. Okay? And he put his hands on the guy's neck. Wow. Okay? He put his... Fred Stanley had said... Hey, did you tell Reggie? I said, no, I don't want to get Reggie involved in this. He, and, and Fred Stanley says, then I'm going to tell Billy. I said, please, that's worse. Right. And Billy went, came out, went wow. and found the guy and did a number on the did guy. Did a number on the guy. Wow. Yeah. Now, did you get a chance to meet Mantle? Yes. Uh, and, and, and I liked Mickey. Again, I, I didn't know him well, but I liked him. But, you know, his line, famous line was, if I knew I was going to live so long, I would have taken better, better care of taken care of, yeah. You know, Mickey but, was a nice man. He was a nice man. But the, again, the alcoholism. The alcohol. You know, and uh, and Elston, I heard, was a real gentleman. Elston was a beautiful man. Yeah, Elston a beautiful Howard, man. Yes. There's no question. El yeah. You know, I mean, those guys. Hey, that that was the Yankees Rat Pack. Okay, Mickey, Billy, yeah. Ellie. And, Scouring. and uh, Whitey Ford. Whitey Ford. Okay, that's the right. chairman of the board. Chairman okay. of the board. Wow. Those guys were bad and dudes. And just recently, um, what did we do just recently? Roger Maris. Right, I met you, introduced me to his sons. Yeah. Look, as far as I'm concerned, Maris has the record. I'm sorry. In respect to everybody else, I love Judge, I love everybody. But Maris has the record. He did it in X amount of games. That's it. Maris has the record. Uh, wait, wait. Uh, in 60 games. Did the judge break him in 60 games or am I, I lost it? He, he, he got in... Uh, I think 60 more... I, 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 I don't know. Nah, I, I, I lost, tra I lost, I lost track, track of that. I, I just went totally blank. You know? But Maris did it... I mean, look, Root has the record in X amount of games. And, in 154 games, Babe and, and Root And Maris did. has the record in 161 In 160, uh, yeah. So, um, I mean, look, is, was Bonds a great player? 
Bonds, see, that's what's sad. Bonds would have got into the Hall of Fame just not taking steroids. He didn't have to take steroids. But that's what happens when a great player takes steroids. You become an immortal. And that's what happens, you know. 75 home runs. I mean, come on. Let's, let's stop for a second. You know, but I, I, I'm not a steroid person. I, I, I like the game clean. I don't know how you feel about that. No, this in baseball is... If that was the case, Babe Ruth would have hit a, would have hit 120 home runs. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I like I, the numbers are it's hollow ground to me. Yeah, absolutely. So between the two of you, I'm curious if we can come up with a dream team: all nine positions, all players that ever lived on the New York Yankees. Oh, Who God. would you guys agree on? Let's go: pitcher, catcher, and then we'll go from first base to the outfield. But Yankees. Yankees only. Right. Okay. So who do we got as pitcher? They last all nine innings. This oh, is course. like you want your dream game. Right. Everybody One has game. 100% okay. the whole game. Wow, this is really... Uh, do we have to do pitcher-catcher first? You could do that last. Okay, uh, let's go around the horn first. Okay. I say first base, I, I, it's got to be Lou Gehrig. Lou Gehrig. Okay, second base. Second base, well, I mean... You know, I don't know Willie was a great second baseman. Um, I go Willie Randolph. If you're going strictly Yankees, I go Willie Randolph for second base. Shortstop, I know what my choice is. My choice is Derek Jeter. I go Bucky Dent. You say Bucky Dent. Okay. Yeah. My, I mean, how could you go against Derek Jeter? You, you know what? It's, it's hard to go against Derek Jeter, but you know what? Derek Jeter got the fourth most hits of anybody in history. You, no, you're right. He First was, ballot Hall of Famer. Absolutely. Absolutely. I got okay. to go, go with Bucky because, you I, go with Bucky. because I'm loyal to Bucky. And you're loyal to Bucky. He's probably a good friend of yours. Very. Okay. Third base. Wow. Go ahead. Who do you got? I might have to go with Craig Nettles. Absolutely. Absolutely. Best I ever saw. Best. Yeah. Okay, now it starts to get tough when, okay. we go to, when we go to the outfield. Go ahead. Left field. Oh, who you got? Jesus, God. Give me who you got. Uh, maybe I'm forgetting somebody. I would go with Roy White. I would go with Roy White. It was a great field. Great. Remember climbing up the walls? Climbing the walls. Yeah. I mean, Roy White was yeah. center fielder. Oh, boy. Who you got? Well. Who you got? Who they, else could it be? It's gotta who be, you got? It's got to be the man Joe O'Mantle. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, Boy, that's a hard one for me. I got, because I'm a Mick guy, I, I got to go with the Mick. I know I'm crazy. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. You got to go with Joe D? No, no I got to go with the Mick. I got to go with the Mick. Yeah. I said that too. Yeah. You know, switch hitter. Yeah. Speed. Speed. Now, now we go. Right. Oh, right field. There's only one. For me, there's only one. And you know that. People don't, people don't realize great hitter, great arm. Roger Maris. I go with Babe Ruth. You know what? You're right. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of Babe Ruth as the pitcher. Babe, you got to put Babe you Ruth. You got to go with Babe. Babe Ruth playing right field. And people forget that Babe had speed. And, ba and Babe had an arm. And he had, of course. Because he was a full yeah, that's pitcher. Right. That's right. Wow, that's a hell of a team. A pitcher. Who's, a, who's, who's who, who starting you got? again? Who you got? I know who I got. Yankee pitcher of all, of any Yankee that ever lived. This and they don't get tired. Who you got? Let's go to catcher. Then we'll start coming up. <laughs> catcher, I gotta go with. I gotta go with. I gotta go with Yogi Berra. Okay, and I go with Thurman Munson. I gotta go with Yogi Berra. MVP could hit anything that came over the fucking plate. I gotta go with Berra. Okay, how about this for pitcher? We could do opener, relief, and closer. You get three. See, that's not fair. But no. but I but I hear you. Open. Okay. You know, it's the start of the game. Could you say the chairman of the board? Of course. You could say Whitey. You could say Roger Clemens. Excuse me. You can. He was a Yankee. Uh, I'll go with Whitey. I go with Whitey. Yeah, okay. Whitey doesn't get the respect that he should he get. He doesn't. You know, people forget him. You I mean, know, don't forget he, that. He, they, he, played against, he played the top teams, man. Absolutely. Whitey. Whitey's got an immense record. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, but how about this? How about this? It's the bottom of the ninth inning. You got to get a hit. You got to get a hit. Any Yankee is up at the bat. Who would you have? Thurman Munson. I got to go with Jeter. Yeah, same type of hitter. I know, but I, Jeter to me just... 
fucking Jeter, man. He just it just astounds me. I got to go with Jeter on that one. But I, I don't blame you. Bottom of the ninth, tie game, man on third. You got to choose a closing pitcher. Closing pitcher? Oh, uh, yeah. I go with the goose. goose I, go with, I go with Sparky Lyle. Really? Yeah. O- over, over, over the goose? Yeah, for me. All right. And, then, and let, me t- let, me, let, me, let me point something out. Mariano Rivera is lukewarm with me right now. Oh, my God. Well, we didn't talk about relief pitcher. Yeah, so, right? No, it's a setup guy, the goose. No, 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 no. If you're, no, hold on. Let me clarify this. Setup guy is the goose. I say you get three. If you're talking about closing the game, Mario, the Mo. I mean, who else is better than that? No, Mo Rivera. No, sorry. If the setup Mo, I go with goose. To close the game, you go with the king. Sorry. That's. Okay. And now let, let, me, let, me, let me point something out to you. And you'll know this. 1977, we're in Kansas City. Right. Right? Billy says to Sparky, this is not a one or two inning job. I need you to go as far as you can take us. All right. And Sparky said, you didn't have to fucking tell me that. I'll go, I'll go all, all fucking night. And Sparky left his arm in Kansas City that night. You remember that yes, game? Yes, I remember that game. He th- four and two third innings he threw, okay? And after that, remember, Mike Torres had to pitched the whole game, right. game six, even though he had the great Sparky Alal, who right. was going, about to win the Cy Young Award for a relief pitcher, a relief pitcher because he left his arm in Kansas City. Right. If Sparky Alal doesn't pitch that game like that, there is never a Mr. October right. because we don't True. go to the World Series. There is so much that right. would not have happened. You're right, you're right. You know what I'm saying? And for that... I will read, like, I, I, I wrote an article. Who was the most important relief pitcher during the George Steinbrenner era? And then I, I explained why. And you said Sparky? Sparky Lyle. Uh, you can't go against Mo. Right? I have Come to. On. I, I have can't. to. I, you know why? They don't even invite this guy to Old Timers Day. They, I mean, they, it's like they forgot Sparky Lyle. Wow. You Is know? he still alive? Oh, yeah. See? You see? I don't even know. Yeah, imagine. I don't know. Mo is the greatest. Mo, Mo is. Ever. Hey, I didn't say he wasn't the greatest. I said the most important. Okay, I got Be- you. And because you know what, Sparky Lyle taught Dave Rigetti the slider. The slider he did. That's correct. Okay, it went down the line yeah. until Mo, off of that slider, developed the the cutter. The cutter. The cutter. Okay, all because of Sparky Lyle. And let me tell you something about, and I know we're getting off, but let me tell you, uh, the great umpire, Hirschbeck? John Hirschbeck. John Hirschbeck said, the reason why Moe's cutter was different than anybody else's, and he could throw it anytime he wanted, because obviously Hirschbeck was behind the plate and called the games. Right. He said, Mo, a regular cutter breaks about, a foot and a half in front of the of the of the uh, batter, he said. Mose would break under a foot. So you think, you think you think where it's it, it, where you're going to see it when you hit it, but it broke so close to you that it would come in, and that's why he broke all those bats. He said he's never seen a cutter like that. You know he was going to throw it, but nobody could hit it. So right handers sometimes. Um, you know, switch hitters would bat the other way. You know, if you they would, you know, go against them. So it was pretty amazing. You know, uh, one guy that we never got to talk about was Don Mattingly. Don Matt, oh, Mister Baseball, who was just a a terrific individual. In five years, in the five years yeah. you count, Don Mattingly was the greatest player in baseball. That's right. I defy anybody who right. showed me those five years. In those five years, absolutely. The greatest player in baseball, period. Yeah. Why he's not in the uh, uh, Hall of Fame, I don't know. No, I, I, I agree with you. I mean, it would have helped if they had won a championship if they won a or championship, two, you know? They did. Which is why I'm so upset about the whole Thurman Munson thing. Right, that's because true. Because he won three pennants, two world championships, gold gloves, or, you know, right. MVP, you right. know, come on. Come on, yeah. You know? That's what I'm talking right. about. 
And uh, so now you're doing a documentary. Is that right about your life? Right? Well, you, you, you know, Chaz, and and I'm and I'm going to be straight up with you on this. Yeah. Because. You know, like you was talking about Billy Martin, and someone says to me, the greatest manager in your, in, in your 50 years, and I say, and I always say, Billy Martin was the best manager that, that we had in that time, mm. and then they send your second favorite, I say, Joe Girardi. Joe Girardi was my Joe second. Girardi. Joe Girardi was my second favorite because, number one, he, he was a good manager, he was a tough guy, and he was a guy who loved children and let me do whatever I needed to do as far as the kids. Mm -hmm. Like when you had that kid, when you asked me to help your friend out because his son was dying, right? okay, it was Joe Girardi who said, do what you got to do. Joe, that, that's yeah. right. And uh, that's how I got to... Uh, that's how I got to Jeter. And uh, and then they'll ask me about Tori. And I, I, I just had too many problems with Joe. You did? I had a lot of problems with Joe. Hmm. Number you know, he, you know, I... I got along with him great. So I, 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 I and I, hey, listen, you're Chaz Palminteri. No, but I always got along with you know? Joe and his lovely wife. I yeah, no, so, hey, yeah, his has... wife, his wife is terrific. Yeah, and right, Joe, right. Joe, and Joe's what he called, but he has his own... Again, I'm not saying, hey, good manager... He had a terrific bench coach in Don Zimmer. Yeah. Okay. But uh, it just didn't work for me. For you? Yeah, because, look, sometimes you know people say, just don't gel. And, and I get it. That's, you know, and that's it. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I pulled for Joe. Yeah. Okay. George Steinbrenner, it was a guy named Arthur Richman who said we should hire Joe Torrey. Uh. Okay. And so what George, George's habit always was, after he had an idea about something, he would always come to me in a hush and say, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Right. You know, and people knew that. His scouting right. people knew what was happening. Right, 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 right. Okay. And when he came to me on Torrey, I said, yeah, Joe. And yeah. he said, why? I said, boss. Number one, he's Italian, like our boy Billy. Yeah. Number two, he's a New Yorker. Billy was an adopted New Yorker. Right. We accepted him that he's way. He's a catcher. You know, and he's a catcher who runs. Yeah. I said, so I think he'll be all right. So, uh, right. So I pulled for Joe, but then when things got tough with Joe and the boss, he sort of took it out on me. No, I got you. Yeah. You know what I'm okay. saying? And that made it tough. That made it tough. But let's get to this. Because we're closing up now, but let's get to your documentary. You're doing a documentary about your life, and that's coming out uh, when, you would say? November. This should be out sometime in November. I'm doing it with uh, producer William O'Connell, who did the documentary on the homeless out in California. Nice, nice. And uh, I, I had different people come to me about doing a documentary, right, but he right. was the guy that I trusted. Well, that's everything. You trusted him, and the, and the name of this documentary will be? Uh, as a the working title right now is Bad Boy Triumph and Tra uh, Tragedy and Triumph. Nice. Well, Ray, uh, an incredible life you had. You know, there you are, 17 years old, doing graffiti. They arrest you. <laughs> it's like something. If I wrote this, somebody would go, "Yeah, you're crazy. That can't happen." You meet George Steinbrenner. He makes you the bad boy, and here you are, 50 years later, still with the Yankees. Still with the Yankee great proud tradition. And uh, gee, I, I could sit with you for two hours. Great stories about the Yankees. And I'm really looking forward to this documentary. And uh, I know who you're doing it with, and he, he does great films, so I'm sure it's going to be great. Ray Narone. Hey, and I just want to say that yeah. one of my big moments in my life has been to know the great Chaz oh, commentary. Thank you. And number two, the fact that George Steinbrenner actually put us together. So yes, I'm he always did. grateful George for that. Yeah. George, he was a good guy. Great guy. Great guy. Great man and a great, great owner. A great owner. I, I guess this is just another Bronx tale. It's just another Bronx tale. <laughs> That's true. South Bronx, East Bronx. Hey, I waited all my life to be able to say that. That's right. Just another Bronx tale. Hey, this is the Chaz Palmetary Show. Come back next Monday at 11 o'clock. Don't forget, you want to see my movies, uh, my movies, my one-man show, go to chazpalmetary.net. Come to my restaurant. Have a great time. God bless you all, and I'll see you next week.